Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Ministry is slow because ministry is throughout multiple generations. And ministry is about multiple generations because ministry is about multiplication. The the task is that the message that has been entrusted to us God's law and his gospel, the whole counsel of God for the whole of human life, all of the message of Christ to be applied in every realm of life, this message that has been entrusted to us, part of our charge is to entrust it to others. And not merely that, but to specifically entrust it to others who will likewise entrust it to others who will likewise entrust it to others and so on and so forth. Meaning that faithful ministry is multi-generational, which means that faithful ministry is slow. And that's part of the reason, I believe, a large part, of why our nation and the state of the evangelical church in our nation is so dire in this particular moment. Why? Because Christians somewhere along the line got really excited about flashing and fast. Christians abandon slowness and faithfulness for those things which are fast and flashy. Christians and leaders in the evangelical church, they gave themselves to church growth seminars, church growth conferences, church growth curriculum and books and programs and strategies. Now, there's nothing wrong with with the intention, the desire to reach as many people for Christ as possible, but we should only do this insofar as we can do it well, insofar as we can do it faithfully. There's no point in reaching the masses if it requires us to abandon the very thing that they desperately need to be reached with. If your church has thousands of people, but there's no potency in your church, then all you've done is you've managed to find a way to to gather together once a week thousands of starving people so that you can now starve together. It's not helpful. The church is supposed to provide sustenance, nourishment, food. There must be something of depth, something real, something deep, something true something true, the Word of God, the hope of Christ. And when we do this, often it's slow. And when we look at at all the major characters throughout the Old Testament, we see that much of their faithfulness, the product of that faithfulness, the harvest, was not received by they themselves, but rather by their children or their grandchildren. That it took multiple generations for certain promises of God to come to fruition. I think that part of the reason Christians are failing is because we stopped building. And I think we stopped building because what we realized, if even only subconsciously, what we realized is that the hard work of building It often is not, the fruit of that work is often not enjoyed by the builder themselves. That most faithful Christian works of building, whether it be planting a church or or planting a school, or or whether it be starting a business or running for local office, most of these things in the realm of economics and politics, in the realm of the church, in the realm of education, most of these works, if they are to be thorough and faithful and built on a firm 
foundation that will endure throughout the ages. These works are slow works, meaning that the, the people who begin the work, the people who lay the foundation, the people who, who give their blood and sweat and tears, their very lives to see these things come about, often, often do not get to reap the reward of that work themselves, at least not in this life. Certainly they will receive a heavenly reward, but they often do not get to taste the benefit of their labor in this life here and now. I think of many of the American Puritans and the pilgrims and the work that they did in laying the foundation for our nation. And certainly, there were many blessings. If they were to stand before us, they would say, this is God's good providence in this instance and in that instance. Cotton Mather's constantly talking about the providence of God, his faithfulness and his goodness to the pilgrims where he was. But they never, ever got to taste of the prosperity that you and I have the comforts that you and I experience on a regular basis. They dreaded the winter because each time that that season would come, they would lose many of the people that they loved. They would die either by disease or starvation or simply by the elements and the cold. And yet they labored and they laid a foundation, they worked, and they built. Wait, 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 real quick, before you go, do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis, and if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much, God bless.